everyone. Uh, I'm James Joseph Brown. I'm here with Laura McBride, the author of We Are Called to Rise. We're here at the Writer's Block in downtown Las Vegas, and I'm going to be chatting with Laura for Helen Presents. So, Laura, I am so glad to have you here with us. Thank you so much for such, having me. I know, it's such a pleasure. I've been dying to talk with you about this novel. I, I appreciate that you read it. It's I, lovely. You know, I read it twice. One of the things I love about this novel is it is refreshingly free of the cliches that we see in so many of the works of fiction that are set in Las Vegas. So, for example, there are no mobsters, no car chases, uh, no disgruntled casino workers try trying to pull off a heist. And I sincerely thank you for that. <laughs> I, well, I've lived here a long time. I, so. I've lived here a long time too. And, and a lot of readers that have lived here are sincerely thanking you for that. And I think it's probably part of the appeal of the book for a lot of us. And um, I know you mentioned in interviews that you weren't setting out to champion Las Vegas or condemn it. You wanted to just portray it accurately as you saw it. Uh, and you've accomplished that. But there's also something else going on, I think. And I wanted to ask you, did the fact that there are so many misrepresentations of the city you live in motivate you to put an accurate one out there? Or was it not a factor for um, you writing this novel? Well, I didn't have goals like that for the book. I didn't have a goal like, I want to present Las Vegas this way, or I want this kind of book or that kind of book. Um, I, I, I did have a very clear understanding of what I wanted. I wanted someone who is like me, who loves to read, who um, loves to sort of fall in a book and really care about the characters, um, but who's very busy, reads late at night, you better keep me you know, paying attention or I'm not going to make it through like I used to do in graduate school. And so I was thinking all the time about this busy reader who still loved words and wanted to love a book and trying to give that person, uh, honestly, an entertaining read. So it wasn't that it was a goal, it was more that my lived experience was that it was uninteresting for people to see Las Vegas in such a flat way. And it's not that there are not interesting things about the Strip and our history and the casinos and gambling. And, a lot of it is fascinating, and it, but it is a long way from the whole picture. Well, there are, th that's interesting because there are so many of your characters that sort of represent that view that this, this um, sort of garish caricature of Las Vegas is just uninteresting to them. So, uh, for example, uh, Avis has a friend who was a former sex worker. <laughs> Uh, but just briefly, she just dabbled in it, and then she moved on. And it's just uninteresting to them. It's just a story they tell over wine one night, right. and they just move on. There's no judgment. Right. It's just a part of the tapestry of their, their girls' night. Right. The, the stories they tell to each other, and they, they move on. Well, I think this is one of the yeah. best things about having lived so much of my adult life in Las Vegas. And it, 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 I don't think it was as true of Las Vegas when I first came. It was true in certain ways, but not in others. But certainly the, the place where I live now is very interesting. It's, it's very diverse and, it, and, and I'm not saying, you know, it's certainly no utopia and we have a, we have a lot of prejudices and racism and biases and I don't, I, don't, I don't want to dismiss that in any way. But it is also in the main a very non-judgmental place and a place where people are very used to bumping into people who live differently than they do and have different ideas and have different values. and um, look at the world differently, and I, I see how rich that has been in my life, and I, I thought it deserved representation. Well, it, it, it definitely comes through, and the characters that you used conveyed that, we'll come back to that, because especially Avis gives us that sense, and I want to come back to her, but before, I wanted to kind of come back, first of all... Avis was the sex worker. I think if I, I'm trying to think of what line you were what reading. Happened? Okay, I thought I it was just. I thought it was sort of struggled friends. that, and okay. that and, or you know maybe. Because Avis school. was. Um, maybe the one I mean who, I she was really reticent about it sharing the stories mm -hmm. that her friends shared. I remember that about her. Mm -hmm. But anyway, she has a past. She has a past. Yeah, she has a past, she has a past. and she 
has a past that is Vegas from both sides. She has that sort of fly-by-night Vegas of the past, living in, uh, living in flea bag motels with her, her mom, who has a very questionable past. And then she lives now this very normal suburban life, which is kind of boring, which right. almost represents the other Vegas yeah. that has grown up and matured and become this world-class destination where people go to shows and, and five-star restaurants. She almost represents that arc yes. of, of how Las Vegas has changed. Her own life mirrors that change. Did you see her as that? Um, well, again, I, I didn't think in big pictures like that, but yeah. the, the way I understood Avis is here's a woman who, um, she has this very chaotic, somewhat painful childhood. Very in which she's, yeah. in which, whatever her needs are, are, are really on the bottom of the burner, and then she becomes this suburban mom and the wife of a husband who makes money, and and she doesn't know how to do it. Like she's never had a mom, she's never had a dad, she's never had a house, she's never had a pool, she's never raised a child in a thoughtful way, and she's never seen it modeled. And and I saw her as somebody who who is faking it all her life. She's just. She's just trying to figure out how are you supposed to do this. And it's not really until she gets in the middle of her life, you know, at the time of this novel, that she starts to draw back to who that child was and to see value in that child and then to be able to question choices she made as an adult woman. So I really, to me, Avis was a very difficult character to write. But once I had pulled out all my teeth writing her, I came to find her very interesting.